Hello, beautiful people of the interwebs. Welcome back uh, to Dragon Age Origins. And two things just before we get started uh, that I just want to share with you. The first thing is that there is absolutely no way in hell that I should be playing this game right now. Um, I have well over eight hours of gameplay footage that I should be editing and rendering uh, so that I have stuff to upload to YouTube, but I just can't stay away. I want to play. So I'm going to play more and make even more work for my future self who will hate me. Myself. And the other thing is that I picked out a special brew just for today uh, called Evolution Craft Brewing Company's Exile Red Ale because I thought it was appropriate because Viata is an exile from Orsovar. Also, it's delicious, but that's neither here nor there. Okay, so the plan is the three of us are going to go to a place. So I forget what it's called. Lothering? Is it Lothering? Of course it's not in here, which is interesting. So also lots of new stuff in the codex that I should probably read. Um... All right, uh, I picked up a shield and I noticed I got a codex entry for it. So let's see what the heck that is. Havard's Aegis. Havard was Mayfrath's closest friend. They were children together in the same Avar clan. They fought side by side in so many battles that Mayfrath dubbed him Havard the Aegis. Better to have at his side than any shield. Mayfrath brought Havard with him to meet with the Tevinters. It was unthinkable to stand before his enemies without his Aegis. If only I knew how to pronounce that. When he understood that Mayfrath was giving Andraste over to be executed, Havard, unwilling to draw swords against his friend and liege, placed himself between Andraste and the Tevinter soldiers. The Tevinters struck him down, and Mayfrath left him for dead. But Aegis was not so easily destroyed. Havard lived and made his way, gravely wounded, to the gates of Minrathus to stop the execution. Too late, he found only the ashes of the prophet left to the wind and rain. When his fingers touched the ash, his ears filled with song, and he saw a vision of Andraste, dressed in cloth of starlight. She knelt at his side, saying, Rise, Aegis of the Faith. The Maker shall never forget you so long as I remember. His wounds healed instantly, and with new strength, Havard gathered up Andraste's remains and carried them safely back to the lands of the Alamari. Hmm. What does that have to do with the shield, though? Can I pick up a shield? Yeah. You want this? Uh... Spell resistance, avoid missile attacks. Maybe you want to keep the one you've got, actually. Extra constitution, extra armor. It'd be for the best. Okay, well, I guess that's good to know. Uh, we learned something new about creatures? We already know about that. Emissary. Genlock emissaries, the most intelligent of the alphas, become gifted sorcerers with many abilities akin to blood magic. These are the emissaries, and they usually only appear during a blight. Ogre. Well, first of all, they're very slobbery. We learned that much. Towering over their darkspawn kin, the massive ogres are a rare sight on the battlefield. Traditionally, they only appear during a blight, but some records claim that ogres have been spotted in the deep roads, hunting alone or in small groups. A small group of ogres? That sounds terrible. At least one report by the Grey Wardens claims that an ogre was spotted alone in the Kokari Wilds in 919 Dragon, though it was weakened and easily dispatched. Up to a hundred of these creatures can accompany a darkspawn horde at any one time during a blight, often using their great strength to burst through fortifications and demolish the front lines of the opposing army. 
They use brute force to charge their enemies like bulls, slam the ground with their fists to shake enemies off their feet, and hurl giant rocks, which just come out of nowhere, by the way, into the face of oncoming foes. Melee can be difficult against a giant that snatches a warrior up in one hand, crushing the life out of him or beating him into oblivion with the other hand, or both. The nimble can try to wiggle his way free, or an ally can attempt an array of stunning blows on an ogre to free the comrade in danger. We did not manage that, that poor mage. Grey Warden lore urges caution when slaying an ogre. Unless it is ensured that they have received a major wound to the head or the heart, it is possible that they are lying dormant and will regenerate to full health within a matter of minutes. During a blight, most Grey Wardens recommend burning all darkspawn to ashes. Dead ogres in particular. Um, we didn't really have time to do that. Books and songs. Oh right, the history of the Chantry, chapter 1. The first blight devastated the Tevinter Imperium. Not only had the darkspawn ravaged the countryside, but Tevinter citizens had to face the fact that their own gods had turned against them. Dumat, the old god, once known as the Dragon of Silence, had risen to silence the world, and despite the frenzied pleas for help, the other old gods did nothing. The people of the Imperia began to question their faith, murdering priests and burning temples to punish their gods for not returning to help. In those days, even after the devastation of the First Blight, the Imperium stretched across the known world. Fringed with barbarian tribes, the Imperium was well prepared for invasions and attacks from without. Fitting, then, that the story of its downfall begins from within. That makes sense. The people of the far northern and eastern reaches of the Imperium rose up against their powerful overlords in rebellion. The Tevinter Magisters summoned demons to put down these small rebellions, leaving corpses to burn as examples to all who would dare revolt. The Imperium began to tear itself apart from within, throngs of angry and disillusioned citizens doing what centuries of opposing armies could not. But the Magisters were confident in their power, and they could not imagine surviving a blight only to be destroyed by their own subjects. Even after the blight, Tevinter commanded an army la larger than that of any other organized nation in Thetis, but that army was scattered and its morale dwindling. The ruin of Tevinter was such that the Alamari barbarians who had spread their clans and holds over the wilderness of the Ferelden Valley at the far southeast edge of the Imperium saw weakness in their enemy, and, after an age of oppression, embarked on a campaign not only to free their own lands, but to bring down mighty Tevinter as well. The leaders of that blessed campaign were the great barbarian warlord Mayfrath, hey, there's that guy again, and his wife, Andraste. Oh. Their dreams and ambitions would change the world forever. From Tales of the Destruction of Thetis by Brother Jedi TV. Chantry Scholar. That guy gets around. Uh, controls. Right. Oh, you can get a. I'm never gonna learn all these shortcuts. That's the. That one. Okay. Uh, yeah. I remember that. I remember that, that frickin' flame spell, and everybody just runs right into the flames. Uh. Hmm. Alistair's mother was a serving girl who died when Alistair was very young. He was raised by Eamon Garen, Earl of Redcliffe for a time. Okay. King Caelan? Uh, yeah, he fell in battle alongside Duncan and Ostagar. We already read the rest of that. Sir Cothreen. Some of us know what honor and loyalty are. Cothreen came to Loghain service the hard way. Oh, that's the... Is this the girl who was like, um, No, but the king! And he was like, You do as I say, woman! Ahem. <clears throat> Cothreen... Oh, is it like Catherine? came to Loghain service the hard way. She belonged to a poor family and was out doing work on the farm when she saw a man on horseback being attacked by several bandits. She rushed to his assistance and found out belatedly that the man she saved was none other than the great hero Loghain. Though she was hardly more than a child, he took her in, offering her a position with his soldiers, and she climbed through the ranks through sheer determination. Becoming the commander of Merrick's shield, Loghain's elite soldiers, was the proudest moment of her life. Duncan. He was killed in battle against overwhelming numbers of Darkspawn at Ostagar alongside King Kaelin. It's just adding, like, a little bit at the end. 
Arl Eamon Garen, nobility does not exist without obligation. We owe all we have, even our lives, to our land and our people. As the maternal uncle of King Caelan, Arl Eamon is one of the king's most trusted advisors. Redcliffe, while not a large or especially wealthy part of Ferelden, is a cr critical strategic location. The fortress guards the fortress guards the western path that leads to Orlais, as well as the major trade route with Orzammar. A well-respected man, though not the most charismatic, King Kaelin King once said of him, My Uncle Eamon is a man everyone thinks well of when they remember to think of him at all. Flemeth. Alright. Boy, there's so much to read. And just for your information, I do, like, really enjoy reading this kind of stuff, so... I will probably read it in bunches when when it comes up. You could just you could just skip ahead if you don't like it. You are required to do nothing, least of all believe. Ages ago, legend says Ban Konabar took to wife a beautiful young woman who harbored a secret talent for magic, Flemeth of High Ever. And for a time they lived happily until the arrival of a young poet, Ozen, who captured the lady's heart with his verse. They turned to the chastened tribes for help and hid from Conobar's wrath in the wilds, until word came to them that Conobar lay dying. His last wish was to see Flemeth's face one final time. The lovers returned, but it was a trap. It's a trap! Conobar killed Ozen and imprisoned Flemeth in the highest tower of the castle. In grief and rage, Flemeth worked a spell to summon a spirit into this world to wreak vengeance upon her husband. Vengeance she received, but not as she planned. The spirit took possession of her, turning Flemeth into an abomination. A twisted, maddened creature, she slaughtered Conobar and all his men and fled back into the wilds. For a hundred years, Flemeth plotted, stealing men from the chasten to sire monstrous daughters, horrific things that could kill a man with fear. These Corcari witches led an army of chasten from the wilds to strike at the Alamari tribes. They were defeated by the hero Cormac, and all the witches burned, so they say. But even now, the Wilders whisper that Flemeth lives on in the marsh, and she and her daughters steal those men who come too near. Morrigan's mother saved the last Grey Worms from death at the top of the Tower of Eshal, but just who or what Flemish truly is is a mystery. Well, I don't think she's an abomination. I mean, she's just an old lady. She's a little eccentric, but... Logan McTeer. This person is an asshole. Uh, during the Battle of Ostagar, he fled the field, leaving King Caelan and the Grey Wardens to die. Because he's an asshole. Or he has a plan, I don't know. <sighs> Morgan's mother claims to be Flemeth. If that's true, the Morgan. Then Morgan might well be a very powerful witch. For the tales of the daughters of Flemeth tell a twisted, monstrous woman who could kill a male with fear. I know, I just read that. She was made to accompany the surviving Grey Wardens, the payment Flemeth said for saving their lives at the Tower of Eshal. It's like, get rid of my daughter, I'm so sick of having her around the house all the time. Around the hut, I guess I should say. I don't know if I picked up anything magic -y. I did have magic -y things, but I gave it to the other guy. And he's not here now. Yeah, yeah, what you have is better than what I have. Do you have uh, another weapon? What are your skills, Morgan? Uh, you could turn into a giant spider. Lovely. Uh, you could give us frost weapons. And you could freeze some targets solid. Got lightning. Telekinetic force. Oof. A hex? Oh, wow. Okay. You can disorient them. Uh, you can make them cower in fear. Hmm. Wait, what was that? Targets already asleep when the spell is cast cannot resist its effect and take massive spirit damage. Drain life. Drain its life in order to heal yourself. Alright. Let's save those, uh, health poultices. Shall we? And you also know herbalism. Cool. And... 
So a little combat training. And you have two levels of herbalism. That's cool. Can you make any, uh... What's that? Abari Crunch. Hmm. Alright, good to know. Good to know. Well, we've been standing around here reading books for long enough. Don't you guys think? Maybe we should take off. Uh, I imagine we're going this way. Although, I do believe that Mor Morgan was supposed to actually lead us out of the woods. Yeesh. Alright, here we are at Flemeth's hut, and we need to go to Lothering. Oh, we've got a campsite. Uh-huh. Alright. Off we go. Off we go to Lothering. Or not. Not gonna make it quite that far. <sighs> Denerim. We took a wrong turn! And I expect each of you to supply these men. We must rebuild what was lost at Ostagar, and quickly. There are those who would take advantage of our weakened state if we let them. We must defeat this Darkspawn incursion, but we must do so sensibly and without hesitation. Your Lordship, if I might speak. You have declared yourself Queen Anora's regent and claim we must unite under your banner for our own good. But what of the army lost at Ostagar? Your withdrawal was most... fortuitous. Everything I have done has been to secure Ferelden's independence. I have not shirked my duty to the throne, and neither will any of you! The Bannon will not bow to you simply because you demand it. Understand this. I will brook no threat to this nation from you, or anyone. Bantigan, please! Your Majesty, your father risks civil war. If Eamon were here... Bantigan, my father is doing what is best. Did he also do what was best for your husband, Your Majesty? Alrighty. Things are not pleasant in Denerim. Also, that seemed really grainy to me. It's the first cutscene I've seen that I was like, wow, blurry. Oh, look, a puppy! Thanks for the warning, buddy. Hold on now. Oh. Man, that dog is uh, right after you. Right. Hey. Um. Okay. Alright, hold on. The music seems really quiet to me now. <laughs> Let's just turn things back up here. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what can you do? Yeah, give us frost weapons. That's good. You can... That's a good idea. And I'm going to... Mm. I'm gonna move up. And I'm gonna do that. Haha! -ha! Pardon me. Coming through. 
Uh, what are you doing? Yes, bash somebody, I don't care who. And I'm gonna attack that guy. What are you doing? Well, why don't you try uh, turning into a giant spider? I think we would all like to see that. Like, immediately. Is she a giant? Where'd she go? Is she a giant spider yet? Hmm. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> she's right there. <gasps> okay, now as a giant spider... Oh, <laughs> gross. What can you do? You can web them. Poison spit. Is that all you can do? Alright, well, why don't you web... Uh, whoever you want. We'll just web somebody. I am already not doing well. Uh... Pardon me while I just quickly take a health poultice. And, uh, you're not doing that great either, are ya? Where are ya? Okay, well that's probably why. I'm gonna attack this one. Oh no, I've been stunned! Um... Could you possibly come over here and help me? Because I have been stunned. I am not in good shape. I think, actually, I might be in a web. Morgan, what have you done? Can I move? Oh, no. That's not me in the web. Okay, good. Good. Good, good, good. He's in a web, though. Um, maybe spit poison at somebody? Oh, you're already doing that? Alright, good, 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 good. You need... Wow, we are going through these health poultices quick. Where am I? Okay. I'm going to... attack this fellow. By kicking him in the nuts! Then I'm gonna move over here. Okay. Are you... Oh boy. Okay, not good, not good. Can you possibly? No, you can't. All right, well, just defend yourself. Uh, well, we got one almost dead. We're doing a terrible job here, by the way. Why don't you just move a little bit? You're doing great! Why is somebody attacking you? You're just... Hmm. I am going to... Can we just undo this, maybe? Can you un-spider? Oh god. <laughs> Now you're just laying there? I didn't realize that was gonna happen, Morgan. Could you get up and move? Oh no! Ah! I'm in so much trouble! If you're gonna shield pummel somebody, get the alpha. As soon as you can move, could you maybe attack this guy who's right in front of you? Point me! Okay. Ow! Come on! How's a dog doing? I don't think there's anything I can really do for him. Oh dear. Oh dear. We're in trouble. I'm in trouble. Did, did she get up yet? Are you up yet? Get up! Wait, which? Good, okay. And, um... There you go. Alright. You are in deep trouble. Um... 
but you probably like <laughs> just run away, but you'll probably just get hit and die. I am in. <sighs> I'm gonna go over here by Morgan. Whoa! Oh, I'm worried about everybody. Except Morgan. Morgan's doing great. Can you, like, do that in this direction? At your order. Like, do a mind blast? While we just run for our lives? I'm running over here with Alistair. Oh, nice! Nice job! Um, I don't know if I could get back and attack them quickly enough, but I, I can sure try. Oh, Morgan, you better move. Um, let's move over there quick. Yeah. Good job. Uh, everybody's become unstunned, so that's not good. Am I? Am I falling? No, I'm not falling yet. Use this. Oh, we're all gonna. We're all gonna f die. <laughs> Pummel, pummel people. I'm just gonna run over here. I think you should too. Oh my god, I'm in so much trouble. Morgan's the only one who really has herself together here. Oh god, she needs to move too. That alpha's about to hit her in the face, I think. Oh god. Just make absolutely sure we've got no... nothing... Um, to help with. I don't have herbalism. Right, we don't have flasks. We don't have flasks. That is the real problem here. Oh my god. Alistair. Yes. We are all so screwed. Everybody just run away! Okay, can you possibly... Vulnerability Hex, Sorient. Drain life, that probably would be good. Oh, I don't know that we're gonna make it! I don't know that any of us are gonna make it. I'm dead. Alistair's almost dead. Morgan's almost dead. I know you're wounded. We're all wounded. At your order. Nope. This fight is not gonna happen. Shit. There's really nothing that he could do. He's dead. Yeah. No, tactical view is not going to help me. Uh-oh. Did all my codex stuff get read? Okay, that's good. 
Oh boy. This is that good. I'm also, I'm having a problem with my headset as well. It's really quiet. Let me, you know what? I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna make a new save in this exact same spot. And uh, I'm gonna go see if I can figure out what, why my headset is uh, acting funny because it's, it's, it's definitely not loud enough. So uh, I'll be back in a few where I'll probably just die again. So look forward to that.